Hi learners! Welcome to Math is Fun with Sir O. Today, I will be discussing the language of mathematics. So before we go to our discussion, I'm going to read first our learning outcomes for this lesson. First, we're going to discuss the language, symbols, and conventions of mathematics. Secondly, explain the nature of mathematics as a language. Third, perform operations and mathematical expressions correctly. And lastly, acknowledge that mathematics is useful or is a useful language. Would there be any question with regard to our learning outcomes? Right, okay, there's none. Okay, so I will let you watch a video clip before we go to our discussion. Okay, so that is our short video clip. All right, so what can you say about our video? What, where is the scenario of our video? And what happened in our video? Anyone? Okay, so the scenario was in the classroom. So one of the boys is answering a mathematical problem on the board. So it seems that he finds it very hard to answer that very simple mathematical expression. It's only two plus one, right? Maybe he is not really sure of what he's going to answer. So he tried to ask or to ask help from his classmate, right? So another boy came to the rescue and he tried to give his classmate the answer using a sign language. It might be that... Um, their teacher is around, so that's why he wanted to, to use sign language instead of saying the answer. But unfortunately, the boy who is answering on the board misunderstood the sign language of his classmate, right? So instead of writing three okay, on the board, all right, so he just wrote there the word okay. So the bottom line of the story is that or, or our video is there is misconception or misunderstanding between the two boys. So that is basically the role of language, okay? So if we know the same language, then understanding would be easy. But unfortunately, here in the world, we have different dialects or even languages that exist, okay? So have you still recall the story of the Tower of Babel? when people wanted to reach God. So they wanted to build a tower wherein they wanted to, to boast, uh, to boast themselves that they, they can reach God. But then God would not allow that kind of characters, okay? boastfulness, arrogance. So that's why um, when they're still building the tower, so God confused them you know, by giving them different languages. So according to some historians or some storytellers, so the story of Babel is the legend where did we get our dialects or our languages, okay? So maybe that might be true, but uh, that's written in the Bible. So anyway, most importantly, here in the world, okay, we have to understand each other. So um, we have our English language is which is our universal language, no? that would be the language that should be spoken by everybody so that we'll be able to understand each other. Okay? Even though we are speaking in our own uh, native tongue, but then we have also to learn English. So if we are learning mathematics here in the Philippines, so some other people 
in other parts of the world are also learning this mathematical concept. And the language of mathematics is just the same. Okay? So what is a language? So before we go to mathematics as a language, then we're going to discuss first the language. What will be the definition of a language? So according to Collins English Dictionary, it is a system of communication which consists of sounds and written symbols which are used by the people for talking or writing. So a system of communication, meaning it has to do with a step-by-step -step process of communication. So you could use the sounds and written symbols you know, to be able to be our spoken words you know, when we are talking, or it could be our uh, letters no? or our uh, composition when we are writing. According to Miriam Webster Dictionary, it is a formal system of signs and symbols, including rules for the formation and transformation of admissible expressions. So this time it becomes a formal system of signs and symbols, you know, including the rules. So now we are bounded with grammatical rules, with syntaxes, okay? um, the pronunciation, you know, if it's uh, uh, spoken words, right? So we are being governed by these rules in order for us to convey our thoughts and ideas to other people. So we are now already having this formal system of writing. So currently we are using the, the English alphabet when we are writing um, letters or if you are writing some composition or even stories or anything. No? And these are actually very important no, as a build, building blocks of knowledge. So, of course, when we were in elementary, when we were in our formative years, we're being taught how to read and how to write and how to count, right? So now we are in college, then, of course, we are going to already familiarize. We are already familiarized with these things, with these symbols, with these signs already, all right? So now what is language for? Where do we use language? So, of course, we are using it to communicate our expression, feelings, thoughts, in, and ideas to other people. So, communication must be a two-way process, meaning when one is speaking, then the other one should be listening, right? It's not a when the first person is speaking, the other person is also speaking. Do you think there is um, transfer of information or would they be able uh, to understand each other when the two people are speaking at the same time? Definitely right, not, right? So basically, uh, communication occurs when the first person is speaking, but then the other one should be listening, okay? and um, the, the language that we use you know, by means of the messages no? uh, we are transmitting to other people or, or we are talking to other people. So those will be the information that will be the basis for him to give his reaction or his feedback right after. So this time after he was able to process mm -hmm. the ideas that you have uh, spoken to him or her, then that person will process that then basically, he is going to give his or her feedback. And when that happens, so this time, the listener becomes the speaker, and you, as the speaker, earlier becomes now the listener. And that goes on and on and on like a cycle, right? So uh, to be able to understand and to be understood, so of course, we have to speak. And we have to listen, but do not uh, speak while others are also speaking. All right. Okay. So how about mathematics? Now, what is mathematical language? So mathematics is a language that is understood throughout the world. So meaning, it is also used in expressing and communicating ideas to others without the burden of translating such to different languages. 
So here in the Philippines, if we say that 1 plus 1 is equal to 2, then definitely that is also the same concept that is being understood or learned by other learners in other parts of the world. Okay, So the teachers there are not teaching differently. So they will not say 1 plus 1 is equal to 5, right? So in mathematics, we have that unity in concept. So whatever uh, language of mathematics or concept that we are learning here in the Philippine educational system, that is also the same concepts and ideas of mathematics that other people around the world are also learning. Okay? All right. So mathematical language is designed for, number one, for numbers, okay? So if we are talking about mathematics, of course, we are also talking about numbers. So we are already familiar with the numbers, symbols that we have, right? So we know what number one look like, what number 11 look like, number five, right? So definitely, all right, so these are, um, the basic things that we have learned from uh, our formative years when we were in elementary and even when we were in our kindergarten, okay? Next would be sets, right? So sets is, or set is a collection of anything, okay? So of course, numbers have also their own sets, no? We can, we can have a lot of number sets, like your set of natural numbers, set of uh, your whole numbers, set of integers, and so on. Okay? So we are talking about a collection of something. Okay? So this time in mathematics, we have our set. So, so in order for us to have a deeper understanding of what we are learning at school, like for example, set of numbers. So these are the numbers that we have already understand and familiar about uh, how they are written, how they look like, and how they are being read, okay? So these are the sets of letters, no? sets of the alphabet, alphabetical uh, letters of the alphabet. So of course, no, if, if we know these collections of anything, then we will have definitely a deeper understanding of, of what we are learning at school. Okay, so by means of sets. How about functions? All right, so functions, um, sometimes we are representing a number by means of a letter, okay, especially in algebra. So um, usually we are using X or using Y or Z. So these are letters of the alphabet that we are representing a number. They are numbers that are unknown. So, so, uh, without yet know it, knowing their values, then we are just um, equating our mathematical expression by means of, of variables or, or these letters of the alphabet. So we call them functions. So sometimes we have like functions of X, then you have there um, the rule that you're going to perform no? by, by means of giving a value to that X. Okay? Say for example, uh, what is f of x? No, say let's say f of x, right? f of x is equal to x plus one. Okay. So what if or what is the value of x plus one or uh, what is the value of f of x if x is equal to three? Okay. Then, of course, our x there, if we're going to input the value of x, which is 3, then that becomes f of 3 is equal to 3 plus 1, right? And what is f of 3 this time? So f of 3, we're going to perform there addition. So 3 plus 1, that is equal to 4. So our f of 3 is equal to 4. So the, that is basically the use of letters, no? In, in our functions. All right. Any question? None. All right. Okay. So now let's proceed with another one, which is your number four, and that would be operations. Okay. So definitely we are being 
familiar already with addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. But in um, computer science, we also have binary operations. Okay, So we're going to learn that if we will be taking subjects in computer science. But for now, let's compound ourselves with the four basic arithmetic operations. So addition, subtraction, multiplication, division. Okay. Then we have also commonly used symbols in mathematics. All right. So in the picture, please be familiarized of yourselves of the different symbols that we use in mathematics. Numbers. So for numbers, um, we are already uh, we already learned how to write numbers. No? We are using your Hindu Arabic um, characters when writing our numbers. But sometimes, if you're going to write an outline, so usually you are using your Roman numeral, okay? Roman numeral, and it is incorporated by your Hindu Arabic in your letters as well of the alphabet, right? So be familiarized with your um, Roman numeral and your Hindu Arabic um, letters. Uh, Indo-Arabic numbers. Secondly, arithmetic operations. So, of course, if we're going to see this symbol, it's like a cross, meaning we're going to plus. If we see this symbol, it mean, it's like a dash, meaning we're, we have to subtract. If we have seen this X here, this symbol means we're going to multiply. And these kinds of symbols we are using in our operations. How about variables? Of course, variables like we have your A, B here to represent a line or a line segment or a ray. So line A, B, segment A, B, ray A, B. We are using the letters of the alphabet to name something or also to um, use as an unknown number. Okay. Next will be inequalities. Um, for example, if you have two values which are not the same, so if we, they are not equal, then we are going to use your inequality. So say, for example, on the left side of your expression, you have your bigger number, and on the right side of your expression, you have your um, smaller number, then definitely... Right, what's in the middle of them would be your inequality. You could use your greater than or less than. So, in the case of our example, so since the number on the left side is bigger, then we're going to use greater than. Okay, this is the symbol for greater than. So, we can say, uh, let's say 10 and 3. So, 10 is greater than 3. Okay, now you can use less than when the, when the expression or the number on the left side is smaller, then the number on the right side is bigger, then that would be, uh, you're going to use your less than. All right? That would be for inequality. Now we have also set operations. So this is used, you now these are the operations that we use when we are combining our sets. So say, for example, if we're going to use your union of two sets, so this is the symbol that we are using. So if we're going to, combine or inc incorporate all of the elements of your set. You have to write all the sets, say uh, all the elements of A and all the elements of B, right? You have to write them down in one set only. So that would be using your union. Okay? And this is the symbol for union. And for intersection, you're getting the common elements between the two sets. So you're using this symbol, right? And if your set has no elements, you can use your empty set or null set, right? And we have also logical symbols. So we are using uh, for if, then um, logical operator, we can use your arrow like this. And it's, we only have one arrow. That's, that means we're going to, uh, it means implies. Then we have also another one. Uh, we have two arrowheads now on the left and the right side so that is for for logical operate operation which is your um, if and only if so meaning it is equivalent to right and so on so we have also other symbols 
Like for example, if you go to your higher mathematics, you will take up calculus, then you have your integral sign. So this is the integral sign for integral calculus. And for example, if you're going to get the square root, so you are familiar already with your radical sign, right? Your perpendicular um, symbol, uh, the pi symbol, uh, triangle or delta symbol, your theta, infinity, okay? And all of these other symbols. So uh, we have to be familiarized with these symbols. If you cannot memorize them, at least, uh, at least be familiarized with these symbols so that uh, if you are going to express your mathematical sentences, you could write them by means of symbols. No? It would be very easy for you to write them using the symbols. Right. How about for number sets? So for number sets, we are using the capital letters of the alphabet. So to name the set of natural numbers, we are using capital letter N. And the elements of our natural numbers includes one, two, three, and so on. Okay, we have here your ellipsis, which means that the numbers, uh, you still have your continuous numbers going to the right side of your number line. Okay, so again, for number sets, we are using your capital letter N. For your whole numbers, the set of whole numbers, you start from zero. One, two, three, and so on. So that is represented by capital letter W for your Z or integers. So that would be capital letter Z. So for the set of integers. So the numbers that we have there are negative numbers, your zero and your positive numbers. Then we have the set of rational numbers represented by your capital letter Q. Okay, by the way, the rational numbers that we have are the numbers that could be expressed using your fraction. And if that is the set of irrational numbers, that is Q prime. Okay, we are using your Q prime. Then we have your R, the set of real numbers. Okay, capital letter R for the set of real numbers and C for the set of complex numbers. Okay, so now if we're going to make our Venn diagram of number sets, so it would look like this. Okay, so... Your natural numbers is a subset of whole numbers, which is a subset of integers and a subset of rational numbers, okay? Then your irrational numbers together with your rational numbers, you know, they are the subsets of your bigger set, which is your real numbers. And all of these are subsets of your complex numbers. Any question with the Venn diagram of number sets? None, okay. Now let's go to the characteristics of mathematical language. So first, right, it is precise. So when we say precise, we're able to make very fine distinction based on definition. Example, a square is different to a circle based on definition. So when you say a square, you can define that it is a shape which has four equal sides. But you can also define a circle, which is a shape which has no no sides or no, um, no sides at all. So that would be your circle. So by means of definition, we could be able to be precise of what we are talking about in mathematics. All right. Now, secondly, we have your concise. So we're able to say things briefly by means of symbols. So in mathematics, all right, it would be very hard for us to write the, the, write the expression by means of uh, letters or words, right? So it could be easier for us to write them using the symbols, meaning we could make our uh, sentences simpler by means of mathematical symbols. Example, twice the number eight is equal to 16. So you can write that using our symbols, two times eight, uh, sorry, it should be equal to 16, not minus, no? So it, it should be what? 2 times 8 is equal to 16. So that is how we're going to write using our symbols. So that is concise, okay? Meaning we're able to say or write briefly by means of mathematical symbols. And lastly, we have your powerful, no? Characteristic of mathematics. So powerful, able to express complex thought with relative ease. Say we have 2 plus 4, 
So it means that we're going to add 2 to 4, and thus we're going to get 6. Okay, powerful meaning. You could be able to give your answers right away whenever you see things in mathematics. Whenever you see symbols that usually use in mathematics, you have already that power to give your solution or answer to the given problems. Okay, so again, our characteristics of mathematical language, number one, precise, okay, concise, and powerful. So don't forget your PCP, okay, as our correct characteristics of mathematical language. All right, so now let's have the comparison between your English language and your mathematical language. So in English, we have learned that uh, noun is naming a person, right? Not, noun is a name of a person, an animal, a thing, or anything, right? So basically, we have already learned this while we were still in our elementary days, okay? And phrase, so phrase is anything, right? It's, it could be a, a word or a group of words that do not convey a complete thought. Okay, meaning, right, so you are only having a um, group of words, but you don't mean anything, okay? So in mathematical language, so uh, we have also counterparts of noun and phrase. So we call them as our, we call it as our mathematical expression, okay? So in English, for noun, we have your Maria, and your phrase, you have your Pedro's dog or big, big eyes. Then, then in mathematical language or mathematical expression, we have 2 plus 5, x minus 4, 2x plus 3y. So when we say mathematical expression, these are the expression that we are using or the process that we are using, but we don't have any value. It does not have any exact or um, specific value. So we call them as mathematical expression. For, for English sentences, so when you say a sentence, it is a group of words which has your, your noun or what I mean, your, your, so it is a group of words which has your subject and your predicate, okay? And it is conveying a complete thought, meaning if you have a sentence in English, it is expressing a complete thought, right? So like, for example, Maria is beautiful. So the thought is there. You have your subject, which is Maria, and your predicate is beautiful, right? So it is a complete um, sentence uh, because you were able to understand what the sentence is talking about, right? Another example, my province is Iloilo. Okay, so the subject is my province. Their predicate is Iloilo, okay? Pedro has a dog named Bantay, okay? Right? So, also a complete thought, right? In mathematical sentence, so since in English language, we are talking about words which convey, which convey a complete thought, then that's basically the same in mathematical language. So, we have also mathematical sentences. So, this time, if your mathematical expression says 2 plus 5, and it will become mathematical sentence if you're going to equate that with a specific value. So say 2 plus 5 equals 7. So this time, it becomes now your mathematical sentence. Also, x minus 4 is equal to 0. So if you are equating your expression um, to a specific value, then that would be a mathematical sentence. And lastly, you have there 2x plus 3y is equal to negative 5. All right? Any question for our uh, English language versus your mathematical language? All right. Okay, so let's have some more of these um, comparisons. So for symbols in English, we're using your alphabet and punctuation. So punctuations includes your period, your comma, your punctuation mark, your question mark, right? But in mathematics, we have many. So we have your English alphabet no, for your variables. 
We have your numerals or numbers. Then we have your Greek letters. So Greek letters, usually we are using that to name our angles. Okay? Like for example, example angle theta, angle beta, something like that, right? Grouping symbols. So you have your parentheses, you have your brackets, you have your braces. And then special symbols like your integral, you have your radical sign, you have your... Um, your factorial, no, it's like an exclamation point, right? Factorial, you have your other symbols as well. So you have to be familiarized with those symbols, right? Next would be name. So in English, we are using a uh, noun to name a person, an animal, or thing. But if it's not uh, express, but these are not expressing a complete thought, okay? For mathematics, okay, the equivalent or counterpart of noun would be your expression, okay? So meaning there's no exact value that you are equating to your exp expression. Now for complete thought, we call that in English as a sentence. And for mathematics, exactly that is also same as our sentence. So this time, if it's a complete thought, then in English, you have your subject and predicate and it gives us the complete thought of your sentence. In mathematical sentence, you have your expression and equating the expression to a specific value of your expression, okay? Action. So in English, um, the, the action words that we are using as our, are our verbs, okay? In mathematics, so we have operations in other actions. Like for example, Say add, subtract, okay? So um, you are, uh, your teacher is telling you something, right? So for example, you're going to add, you're going to subtract. You're going to simplify or rationalize your answers, okay? So action. What's in a sentence? So in English, we have verbs, but in mathematics, okay? All right, so, so in English, we have your is as used as our linking verb. Okay, say, for example, math is fun, right? So you're linking your subject, which is math, to its predicate, which is your word fun. Okay? And the linking verb that you're using is is, okay? But in mathematics, is could be mean differently. So you could uh, uh, say that it is used as equality, it is used as inequality, or even membership, depending on how is is being used in our sentence so later on we're going to know how to identify our word is whether it is used as equality inequality or membership mm -hmm. then we have your attribute of a sentence so for english sentences if we we understand that uh, the sentence is saying truth you no know, truthfulness or what i mean if the sentence is a true sentence then that would be fact okay Otherwise, it would be fiction. So same also with mathematics. So we can say that the mathematical sentence could be a true statement or false statement. All right, any question? Now let's go to the convention in the mathematical language. Convention is a general agreement about basic principles accepted as true. So that's according to, to Merriam-Webster Dictionary. So in mathematical expression, in mathematical sentence, that is basically the correct way of arranging our symbols in our expression or in our sentence. Of course, if your, if your, your symbols are giving you a complete thought, okay, meaning that is a mathematical sentence. Otherwise, if it's not giving us an idea that it is not conveying a complete thought, then that would be mathematical expression, right? So again, it is the correct arrangement of mathematical symbols used to represent mathematical object of interest, okay? So that is the convention in mathematical language. Now, grammar in mathematical language. Okay, so now let's find out um, the word is, OK? 
Okay, so the word is in mathematics could mean equality, inequality, or membership in a set depending on how they are used in a sentence. Say, for example, okay, um, 10 is 2 times 5, okay? So if you're going to observe, you have two values, okay? Uh, on the left and right side of the word is, okay? So on the left side, you have your 10, and on the right side, you have your 2 times 5. And basically, 2 times 5 is equal to 10, right? So if both of the left and right side are the same, then your is here is telling us that it is used as equality, okay? Example number 2, 10 is greater than 3. So as you can see, that 10 is what? This is greater than 3, and they have different values. Again, since 10 is not the same value with 3, then our is here is used as inequality. Then lastly, 10 is a natural number. So if our is is only linking our 10 as a member of the set of natural numbers, then we are only talking about membership. So again, the word is could mean differently. It could be equality, inequality, and membership in our mathematical sentence depending on how they are used. Okay? So that would be number one. Number two, a number in a sentence may be of cardinal, ordinal, or nominal type. Okay? Like, for example, my phone number is 3291428. Okay? So if you are only naming the number, Okay, you are only telling the names of the number like 3, 2, 9, 1, 4, 2, 8. So that is just nominal. So nominal taken from the word name. Okay, meaning you are naming only the numbers, the number symbols given in our sentence. Okay, secondly, I have three dogs in our house. So if the sentence is telling you to answer the question, how many? Okay, how many dogs do you have in your house? Then the answer would be three. And that number is cardinals. If it's answering the question, how many? Okay. And lastly, we have Anna is first place in the contest. So if the number that you have there is telling you the rank or arrangement or position of that object in the sentence, then that is ordinal. Meaning, it is how being um, orderly placed in your, in your series of numbers or in your sentence. So, a number in a sentence may be of cardinal, ordinal, or nominal type depending on how they are being presented in our sentence. Okay, so for nominal, you are naming only the number if you're answering how many, then that would be cardinal. And if you are going to tell what would be the rank, the placement, or the arrangement of the number, that would be our ordinal. Okay? All right. Now let's go to number three. So the words and and or mean differently in mathematics from its English use. Right? So you're using and in English if you're going to enumerate the objects in the sentence with the same value. Say, for example, I like bananas, apples, and oranges. Okay, so all of um, the words that you are enumerating are of the same value. They are all fruits, right? And you're using and because you wanted to um, give each of the object the same values. Okay, and, right? How about or? So or is used in English language as, um, as if you are uh, giving, giving two contrasting ideas. Like for example, um, hot or cold, okay? What else? Um, white or black, or it could be also um, red or pink, right? So, or there means you're going to uh, give the two objects their contrasting ideas, right? Or maybe you wanted to give option to 
to somebody. Okay, which one is better? Uh, I will be using this black or red dress. Okay, you're you are asking an option. Okay, the best or the better option that you wanted to to ask from your friend or other people. Okay, but in mathematics, and or or mean differently. We are using this as our logical operators in our topic in logic. Okay. Number four, mathematical objects. Okay. Uh, they are presented in many ways, such as sets and functions. All right. So objects in mathematics could be presented by means of sets and by means of functions. So the notions in the mathematical language, number one, synonyms. Secondly, the importance of truth. Third, conventions and syntax. Number four, definitions and undefined terms. And number five, simplicity and elegance. So let's go to number one, which is synonyms. In English, when you say synonym, these are two words that have the same meaning. So say happy, so the synonym for happy would be glad. When you say sad, so the synonym for sad would be lonely, okay, or blue or something. In mathematics, we also have synonyms. So let's say five. Five is equal to six minus one, right? It can be also 10 halves because 10 halves is also equal to five. It could be also two cubed minus three because two cubed is eight. 8 minus 3 is 5, right? Now, let's go to the importance of truth. In English, okay, let's say the word cat begins with letter K. Is this a correct um, sentence? All right. Basically, if we're going to um, see the word cat is spelled as C-A-T. So, it does not start with letter K. So, Right, our first sentence is fiction or it is a false sentence. How about CPU is a Christian institution? Okay, so after gathering the facts, no, you are asking the information from other people have known CPU for a long period of time, then he will tell you something, something, right? So CPU is indeed a Christian institution. Thus, you can say that statement or sentence is true okay so in mathematics we also have truthfulness of our mathematical sentences you say s plus seven is equal to seven plus your s okay so you have properties in mathematics that tells you that whenever you arrange your your addends or may it be represented by letters or numbers, that will give you the same value. So S plus 7 is equal to 7 plus S, and that mathematical sentence means it is true. Okay. What if we have M minus 5 is equal to 5 minus M? Right? So on the left side of your equal sign, you have your positive M, and here on the right side, you have negative M. On the left side, you have your negative 5. And on the right side of your equal sign, you have your positive 5. And they are not the same. So meaning, we cannot say that the statement now is true. So therefore, it is false. Okay? All right. X is equal to 1. So this time, our X here is represented by a value which is equal to 1. All right. Let's go to conventions and syntax. All right. So conventions, earlier we have uh, discussed that it is the correct way of writing your mathematical symbols. So if you are writing your symbols in mathematics, you should have only one equal sign, right? Especially if you are writing your solutions. So if you're going to write two equal signs, so you will be tagged as wrong syntax. Okay, there will be a wrong convention of your symbol. And thus, your solution is now incorrect. Okay, so you have to be careful in using your equal sign. Okay, 
So this is the correct way of writing your solution. So you will have only have your equal sign written once. All right. So you have your left side hand of your um, equal sign and your right hand side of your equal sign. Number four, definitions. So definition of even number A. So in mathematics, we could be able to um, define objects or symbols by means of uh, the way we'll be able to describe them. Okay. Let's say definition of an even number. Okay. That is A is equal to 2N where your N is an element of your Z. Okay, so point is defined as which has no dimension. Quadrilateral is defined as our geometric figure on a plane that has four sides. Okay, so we could have definition of terms in mathematics as well as the symbols we are using. Simplicity and elegance. So mathematics is elegant since we are using a correct way or manner on how we could present our step-by-step -step process, okay? So simplicity and elegance. So we have your solution A. So we're going to prove that the product of two even numbers is even. So for our solution, let A is equal to 2N and B is equal to 2M. So both of these, um, N and M are elements of C. So meaning they are numbers in C and two there denotes that we are using even number. So if you're going to multiply A and B, that would be equal to 2N and 2, 2M. Then AB is equal to 4NM. Then factor out your 2. So that would be 2 times 2NM. Then basically, we could um, replace 2NM with K. So we can represent that with K. So now our answer would be 2K. So therefore, the product of two even numbers is also an even number. All right. So we have here your check your progress. So this will be serving as your assignment. So for exercise one, you're going to identify the following. If it is an English noun or phrase, or it could be a mathematical expression, or it could be English sentence, or it could be mathematical sentence. For exercise two, this time you're going to identify the word is in the sentence if it's used as equality, inequality, or membership. And for exercise three, you're going to identify whether the number in each item is cardinal, ordinal, or nominal. Okay? Right, so they are very easy. And thank you so much for listening today. That's all for today. I will be seeing you back next time and keep safe always. Goodbye, everyone. God bless.